because it's hard to like eSports composition. Yes, you have the TF and the Talia who are, are decent at keeping threats at bay, but I feel like there's just so much overwhelming engaged potential for the side of Honwai Peaceful. I think for T1, lane 1v1 just really putting him in an uncomfortable spot right now. Oh, Carrier making his way in as well. Speaking of uh, uncomfortable spots, that's where Zekker is as well in this first blood as Ona comes Abilities on. to use. Well, now you can see you've got Delight moving on over to help Peanut out with this dragon. First one is going to be a mountain here. We'll see exactly what soul we're going to get. Mm -hmm. Zayas throwing some red cards out. Doran pretty happy with the fact that he's hit level six as Zayas has hit level four. So the control that you're going to get with a Twisted Fate in this matchup, not really there here. It's gone completely. And he does have his ghost back, of course, now, so can you know relatively safely get out of any engage attempt that Doran has. But that is going to be successful. The thing is, he has no idea that could be overlooking potentially yeah. for a dive. Delight is a pretty good bodyguard, but it's four versus two here towards the bottom side of the map. There it is! The sling does come back, but Viper will survive! And the turret is Zekka. so angry, Zekka is going to move in, he finds the ulti onto Faker, who does survive the engagement! Zekka still just trying to protect his bottom lane, it's working out so far, as he unbinds the soul, finds the double knockup, Seismic Shock goes wide! And T1 will not find a kill down here. Beautiful defense from... Oh, oh they get the kill on a Faker! Beautiful defender as well. The way that you would counter it is by, uh, okay, I'll hold that thought as Cease and Assist does come in. Seismic shove as well, the full combo, but from over the wall, there's Viper. Delight survived for way too long, but now Carrier has dove on top of Viper. He's trying to avoid the burst fires, as now the wall is going to come in, and T1, they single out. Oh, way. Yeah, Carrier is going to get stunned up here. Delight just playing Bouncer. We'll try and get Ona out of here. They aren't not going to be able to find it. And Twisted Fate, you're dealing with Talia. True, true. And there, there are a lot of things that can break it, as you mentioned, but it's going to be quite useful if you end up getting caught by one of those stray abilities as they are going to be fishing for you. Uh, and, and Zeri, deceptively quite strong in early game team fights, as we've discussed quite a bit. That's why Zeri moment's kind of a meme as it happens. You have to catch the Zeri, you have to pick off Goom, and if you fail to do so, you will lose it. Carrier not really finding too much, and now it does put his uh, ultimate on cooldown. You can see T1 are priced into forcing these. I'm like eSports though. They just want to get into these team fights. They want to be able to try to lock down this area. Of course, Magnus Storm's pretty good, but so is this. The season and assist comes in and Faker and Ona just showing Zekka that this combination of Talia and uh, and the Vi is not to be trifled with. And you know, that's part of the issue as well. Hot Life Esports have two carries in their composition. If you target one of them like that, if you do that to Zekka in the lead up to or just at the start of a team fight, suddenly you're dealing with three tanks and a Varus, and it isn't that on here Varus. So the ability to have that sort of sustained damage in a fight isn't there. So Zekka shows you the priority when it is a Chemtech Soul. Five members of Hot Life Esports group up. T1 don't even care. Yeah. So just look to giving an edge of the T1. Homelike Esports are on the objective. Yeah, started this one up. Carrier on a flank angle. We know that the wall can always come in, and there it is for Faker. He is not going to ride it through. He's just going to try and disrupt us. There is the Destiny to light off on the side, but there is the engage from Carrier. The seismic shove, and Viper is going to be wiped out. Sorry, Zeka has already gone down. The Drake is going to be secured, but that is sold for maybe just a team fight loss as Faker will for Barrett. Yeah, and you know, Peanut is still up and available, does have Flash, does have Smite, TP's available for Zekka and Doran, but the Baron is going down so fast. It is, Peanut should be able to make it into the pit, but this is going to be a difficult 50-50 to win. He flashes forward and they just turn on him immediately, taken down before the Baron's in range, that's going to be the secure, and T1 just... The problems in the composition here for Hanwha Life, you know, even with the, the setup they have, is Doran is a huge brick wall. T1 with the Baron. He should be able to get even more of these items. Seismic Shell going to be picked up once again as Faker finds yet another one. That's a good Glacial Prism, though, onto Zayas. He's going to have to get out of there. The Unbound Soul gets Zekka back to safety as well, but now the re-engage. Delight looks for it, but he's just dead before he can do anything. And so T1 with five men strong, still with that Baron for another minute. And there, they've already gotten rid of the horse. There's just not enough sustained damage in this composition for Hanwha, even with the re-engage. As you're looking at Poke Forest, you're looking at Ione, there's no mage here that can just layer damage upon damage upon damage. There's no real AD carry, not traditionally anyways here for Viper. He's got to poke his way oh. through. Yeah, Seismic Shove is going to connect onto Doran as he teleports in. That is not the warm welcome that he was wanting as he looks to try and help out his teammates. Looks to try and get out of there. Gumi Yushi taking matters into his own hands. The tar it's locked in, you know, that's what yeah. you, you yeah. assume it's going to be. And now... Oh, Ona possibly with a bit of a face check here. Will be oh. taken out! Two on Dragon and have Doran hold the angle here. Now he's going to have to wrap around. Yeah. 
No 50-50 with no smite. Exactly, let's see what T1 can do. They're gonna have to try and fight this to avoid losing the Elder. There's a seismic shove, and they are going to even out the numbers. There's no Zorin. Okay, survives for a very long time, but then does go down. There's the Elder now, as they have the executed second finds him, and a three-match shove from Faker is massive. And it's a double for Faker. They'll take a double as well for Gumiushi, and it's now only Viper left with this Dragon buff. And I don't think they care. Faker's just gonna throw some rocks at him, and that and even Elder isn't enough. T1, they lose the dragon. It seems like it's going to be doomed, but they handle the fight. They manage to lock them down. The health on Guma was so close to the execute threshold, but not quite there. And Viper just cannot do enough. Viper can't do enough. He doesn't have the time. He's playing the Daldi Bars here. And even with the miracle of owner just stepping forward there and getting caught on the life can... Yeah, it's already gone. There's easy... A lot of these champions for T1 can escape over the wall, as you can see. This will be his seventh. Oh, okay. Oh, no. Looking for that opportunity. Gets into the back line. They dive on top of Viper. He's able to get himself out. Now 1v1 and he finds it against Zayas, the ulti. And Viper's still alive! alive. He finds the double kill. Oh, is going to be the next to go down into the GA. Is now Doran is just playing bodyguard. And T1, they couldn't do it! They killed him so many times Owner that again. time they weren't able to get there. Owner again is, is, is picked here before the Elder, and it's a really nice fight here for Hanwha Life, but they get a second miracle. They get a second lease on life here. How many do they need? I mean, we already wrote the obituary. <laughs> yeah. We were memeing about Karia and stuff. We were talking about Gumasari. I mean, they... I was ready for game two. They threw so much at Viper. I think they just expected him to die, and I'm going to be honest, I did too. Me too. Games was what we talked about in the draft, and I think was going to be relevant in this game because T1 had a 10,000 gold lead, but now the tables have turned and hot. Inhibitor oh, Towers, if they can thin out the wave, you know, they have Talia, they have the, the W from Zeri to help out. Not something that we've had to talk about really either, as Hummel Life will now move towards this inner turret. They are just splitting. We are, we are getting back to even territory as the Weaver's Wall is going to be just elected into. Faker not going to be able to convince them not to break open the bases. Like you say, it could be a trade of Inhibitor Turrets, but Hummel Life Eastwards, it doesn't look like they're stopping as this Elder is still ticking down. Another five seconds on that oh, one. They find the engagement and they blow up Faker into the back line goes Curry. He tries to find that quickness, but he's permanently frosted and taken down. The deletion on two members, is that enough for the end of the game? I don't think so. As Hummel Life Esports, they don't think so either. Yeah, so many cooldowns been there. They have to respect the Zeri. Guma's still such a threat with Flash available, with GA available. They will actually look to reset the back of this. Doran's going to TP in. They want to look for the end They want to end. They want to end. They don't want to deal with that Weaver's Wall anymore. Or rather the flip. Oh, no! they find the engagement! Able to get out of there though is Zayas. He did have that flash available as there's the teleport back in. Owner is going to be CC'd as well as he's going in, but he's by himself. T1 are just running in one after the other. The destiny is going to be popped, but I think their destiny is one dead Nexus and zero one in the series. Humble Life Esports were down 11,000 gold and they will kill the Nexus here in game one. You know what? I think I'll take five of these, please. Yes, please. <laughs> they take it in the end. Early game, the lane swap puts Zayas in those early skirmishes. It's just done. You know, it doesn't really have legs to stand on, especially the Viego aspect of this composition. It does make me think, because one of the picks we've seen, obviously everyone thinks Scion when they think lane swaps, but Zach, they don't know. I have no vision. Yeah, there's the flash forward from Carrier. Viper able to try and get off to the side. Good crash down to try and get him out of there, but there's the permafrost, and Viper will be taken down. Kumi Yushi. Little tempo here, but he's got a tear and is presumably going the lethality route, so maybe just wants the. Leaning into the, the Sejuani here, because as you mentioned, the CC, it's CC versus extended damage once he gets out of that combo. Ah, uh, do I? <laughs> Careful. Yeah, does manage to get the shield as Crash Down does come on in. And Zayas, he's getting very, very small. Still able to get a decent knockup, but he's going to explode him. And now the Bloblet's coming on forward. Doran, can you take them down in time? Is the question. Only gets a couple. Production before you are on the ground. Oh, this is a little bit dangerous as Faker is going to get engaged on immediately. Flashes away the Glacial Prison. Going to go wide. There is the lockdown on the Dragon for T1. 
but Delight gets them on in there. They take down Faker and Bristomite is massive and has two kills to start off the fight. Carrier is not long for the world either. And Harmalife Esports. Now, they... as he tidies up this wave, oh. might be face checking though, as there's the Vault Breaker in. The ulti comes down. Empress Divide is avoided though, as Faker able to get that Valkyrie off before the Azir swoops in. Close call there. <laughs> a very close call. Yeah, I felt like a little bit rough. Zeka could have committed the flash. But yeah, didn't right. I think he needed it, and I think they were just kind of. I think they wanted a bit more time for Zeka to get a bit closer, but then Peanut, obviously, if, if Faker comes up and wards the brush, you just have to go then. Uh, Packageless Faker, he's got it on this angle now. Yeah, this is so dangerous. They do manage to take down the second dragon, but they look for the engage. There's the package to live it over the top, and it's owner that goes down first. Zeka will find Faker's special delivery, and it's Onwa that managed to get it on over, and it's a Hextech. So tanky at this point. Yeah, no, this is kind of ridiculous. Is Gumiushi going to come on over? Piercing Darkness not going to work out. It's now, let's see whether Zayas is going to survive. He flashes four, gets the head bomb. The Empress Divide is going to throw him against the wall as they focus the turret. The Bolt Breaker is going to get the shield for Peanut. And Zeka, he survives with his shifting sands. Sets up his own turret as well as they take down the Zack. Doran, he survived. His turret had already basically fallen down earlier. And the Rift Herald is going to charge in to that inner turret as well. Doran actually having the gusto to take down Shelly himself. Coming in. Yeah, TP from Zeka here. Moves towards his top side. Is now Faker having to deal with it. Conquering Sand's going to come through. And of course there's Peanut. Turns up. That is going to be just the last Sand. And also, you know, Faker doesn't have that money even quite stacked up yet. Again, Ooh, Zayas. This flank angle pretty big, big from Zayas. Like you were talking about, Carrier making his way in. The Drake already secured. Han was first of the game, but there is the elastic slingshot. They dive on in. The package down as well, and they take down Zeka, the priority target. Doran looks for the back line and will be able to trade the mid lane in. And there is a great Magnus Storm as well. Viper, the next one that can try and carry this fight. His owner is starting to pop off, but the piercing arrow is going to take him down. Zayas now just trying to peel as best he can. Peanut, how are you still alive almost? Managing to escape as Viper has to flash away. Doran, of course, can just survive for basically forever. He'll make his way out as Viper was kind of baited into this one and will be falling down. Dodges a few abilities and T1 win a team fight. It's just tank diff. It's just tank diff. Both of these tanks. So behind in terms of his itemization, he does not match the poke of Zekka, ironically enough. Oh, oh, no. Crash down. Carrier going to get knocked off and destroyed. Zayas diving on in there. Doesn't find the stretch up from the kill back. Does come on in though. And now Oda, he knows how to play the realm. And Prismai does nothing. The Heartbreaker dies on. And Faker will now get into that back line. And Oda, pretty good at the Azir as well. Very nicely done. He'll now just transform into everyone. Winning this with, with Faker's Corky. Just follow up damage from the sky. And obviously, the package on the last fight where they were able to take Zeka out of his door just has to sit back and walk. They have the package available. You see Doran looking for a flank angle. Faker's just taking mid tier one. They're pressured on both angles here. Honorite Beast was going to try and take the dragon and do what they can. Well, let's see whether they can actually get some sort of steal. As Faker still in that mid lane, Doran has moved back to try and contest. The Dragon is going to equalize, and T1 will start it off once again. And Zayas does take a hex gate over. That's a teleport in from Doran. Just gets into the pit. Of course, he can do this because the Rex Aishi is so incredibly tanky. And just now, going to be burrowed around, moving in. Let's see who manages to take it in. Peanut, the locks down the dragon, but can they win a fight is the question. Doran unable to tunnel his way out. They bail out. Doran is a casualty of this call from Humble Life, but at least they're able to attack. This one was on the Sejuani, not a good target. Then the Zack even worse. I thought you finally found someone you can kill, but not confident the damage was there with Peanut by himself, so ends up backing away. Heal away. Faker still with that package up. They want to get that turn, and they're going to need to do it sometime soon. Now the package is going to be used just to try and round Dor Doran here, but it isn't exactly the most. He actually just decides to go back on top of the package. I don't know about that one. That is going to be Ona getting his first kill of the fight. Takes down the big tank of this one, and both flashes from the carries are now on cooldown for Humble Life. And this may just be both objectives to T1 here. They can rush down this Baron now, and with Doran down, it's hard for Humble to stop. I mean, he doesn't have flash. They don't have vision. All right, Peanut and Delight still here. There's the CC onto the buy. He is very tanky, but the Rel is going to go down. Faker's just executed, but I just don't think it's enough to win them this fight. Viper cannot turn up in time. Another teleport. Zeka. Going to come on in as Zeka. He could be the hero, but full information is there for T1. 
and they will be able to take down this Baron. Forward. And that's just going to put them on full point. And this is just a chain of events, a domino effect of what happened with Uncle Life trying to stop them. I'm trying to attack carry him, but you're going to take so long to kill him. Yeah, this is taking forever, and there is no damage here in this fight. Remember, this is a lot of tanks. Of course, there is Peanut there. They will be able to get through the Sejuani, but they have to invest everything to take him down. And they'll lose an inhibitor for it. They may even lose the base, as the backs have now been started for Humble Life Esports. Dawning Channel just to stop them, and they'll take the first Nexus turn. There is so much damage under these turrets as well. The turret trying to look for a Zekka flank. They shut them down. You end up losing inhibitor for this. You get the kill on the more oppressive. Threatening that bottom inhibitor, taking it down. Is Peanut now in trouble? Yeah, Perry just going to interrupt him here as Peanut tries to take the hex gate, but it is not going to work out. He gets himself a big old shield and is just going to be taken out. There is now Ono turning into the vine. Looking to try and get a little bit of a re-engage. I think Peanut trying to buy some time makes a bit of sense, but Feels like a little bit like he was throwing away his life there. Yeah, I mean, he could, could have maybe tried to set up for a sandwich, but there's just no control. He's identified early. Oh, God. Oh, Delight taking so much damage here is now T1 pushing down this mid inhibitor turret. That is going to evaporate. And this feels a whole lot cleaner. There is the engage. The elastic switch up. Fantastic by Zayas to make sure they're all CC. The Empress Divide tries to get something done, but it's from the grave for Zekka. And once again, just engaging with reckless abandon is Zach. Gorgeous this game. And T1, they will answer back and make this best of five a best of three. And win one against Humble Life for the first time this playoffs. And I feel like. You know, game one, we saw a lot of power to cut through these tanks, and also it means you're not dealing with a full armor, Cassante and Orn, which I think is very important. My fear for T1 in this competition, I think on paper, you just remove the, the right side of your screen and you look at only a T1 strap. Searing charge, but Arctic Assault gets Peanut out of there, but now won't have that Q available. That will be the Drake going over to T1. First mountain collected here for a composition with two tanks. That is scary as Needlework has come out here. Doran fighting against the Cassante and will be able to stay alive. Being invested here by Faker. Yeah, same to be said of Zekka who won't mid. So let's see what the light can actually get done here. Chain. Not quite going to connect, but there is the ram. It's going to get called, gets a knockup only on to Delight right now, but his owner goes down so incredibly low. Super Mega Deathrocker coming in, Dawning Shadow to try and keep them alive, and Doran is just dashing around with reckless abandon. The Drake goes to harm the life, and they manage to pick It's up. just that you, you don't know exactly the angle Zekka's going to take, which still ultimately was their demise there, and the Emperor's Divide is used so late just to secure the rest of the members retreating. Could have been even worse there for the side of T1. Just a great angle from Zekka, and it felt like a heavy could be just fine. Um, okay, not gonna stop him one more time, as this is getting a little bit rough now. Zekka moving on over, there's the ulti, it does come on through, they dive on in. Empress Divide gonna be avoided here by the Yone, but in comes Gumiyushi, over the wall goes Peanut, and he's once again met with another T1 member. And this time Peanut having an even better performance than what we saw in game number one. I feel like he's much more present, maybe too present, if we're going to include that uh, play previously. But it's definitely better to go that direction than it is the direction of passivity, I think, especially. Uh, so now with his pressure, the top of the jungle open. Yeah, Gumushi actually sticking around for a little bit longer than he needs to as the permafrost and Super Mega Death Rocket to give the kill to Viper. So that's him, but it's going down fast. Yeah. The uh, control one in the back of the pit is going to be taken down, but it does give Homolife Esports full information. Hook now going to come on through. Flame Chompers go down. They do manage to secure the Baron, but can they find the fight as they split the Red Sea as in goes the Yone finds absolutely no one. Double knock up from Carrier is fantastic, and they're on top of Viper in an instant. Double kill for Faker, and this is on top of the Baron they've already taken. Homolife Esports just caught napping. And this is how you know, I mean, Faker ends up picking up the kills here, but you know this is a Faker call. This is his experience. They know they're tracking the teleport on Doran. He's not there, and T1 make these calls all the time. It's a trademark T1 moment. 20-minute Baron. Gorgeously played. They'll now move over, even out the dragon count as well. The kill count. Uh, actually just evened out there by T1, but I feel like he's able to engage or flank with no vision, no teleport wards for Zekka. Yeah, they do have the teleport, so there's at least that. He can teleport onto the ward or something like that. They get a nice knock up onto Doran, but he's just barely inside the mist. They do get the Glacial Prisoner's Carrier. Oh. May have stepped too far forward. That is a lot of CC, but he just 
baited them in, and then the ram comes down by, but trying to dodge, but he's going to get thrown back into the waiting arms of T1. It's more kills for the god of the mid lane, and T1, they're looking to take more. It feels like Honor Life Esports aren't prepared. T1 firing on all cylinders. They're the ones setting the pace of the game. Where is Zeka in that fight? They're just not present. It feels like they kind of have the game too, just fallen out of control. And T1, they are driving the pace of this game, driving the pace of the series, and looking to end here and now. Yeah, and frankly, after the beginning of game one, is oh. Zeka here not going to get anything done with this? Yeah, Dorant, he's, uh, he's inside his mist. Passage of play, and neither of them was the signal to go. Just shows how rough the state of the game, in, game is for them now. And how powerful Baron is into a copy long for this world, Dragon. As Hummer Life Esports, they definitely need to be towards that Baron. Like you were talking about, Wolf. That is exactly where they are. Drake is going to be secured. That is Dragon's a concern if he stays on it. Does have teleport, can join this fight at a moment's notice. As T1, they have got this Baron down extraordinarily low. I think it's actually going to be taken this time. Never mind. They are going to turn the big teleport as Empress Divide. Going to be flashed out of the ulti avoided once again. As Zeka also gets himself out of trouble. Doran going golden, but he is so incredibly low and will be taken out. The hook comes in and there is another ram to come down. Peanut flashing away and this time the Searing Charge is not going to do it. But Delight is not going to be oh. so lucky. The double knockup is gigantic from Zeko, who once again drifts away from the fight. But Humble Life Esports have lost too much, and T1 have lost no one. They lost no one, no kill for Viper, no reset to come through. And it was so close there. The angle for Zeka, he had it, but he whiffs it. Faker mistimes the ultimate, but Zeka's not able to follow up with anything there. And it's not a trade. We've seen so many of the trades go Humble Life's way. It's one for one. Viper lives. Oh. Not possibly engaged on here as Jonas Strong is giving us the full zoom. That is massive. The snare is back up. Going to be taken out at the same time as the Baron. Gumeyushi with the fancy moves. And T1 are going to march up the mid lane. And now without the Yone, who has been that threat on the back line, every time we've seen Guma in trouble, it's usually been Zeka, the one providing the threat. Hard Life Esports in a much worse position to try and fight this off. I think they just have to give up the mid inhib, but their top inhib is open, so this could just be double inhib for T1 before Zekka's even back up. Whoa! Uh, Doran not immune. Uh, I can confirm. Taking a lot of damage here from Faker with that Leandri's anguish. And T1 gonna take their first Nexus turret. That was dead in a blink of an eye. One they cannon still in here. position, yeah. Still allowing them to continue to put the pressure on. They can take out this inhibitor here in top side. Two inhibs down, waiting for that next wave. Hanwha Life, seven seconds for Zekka, but how much of an impact will his ult really make? It hasn't been his day here, it hasn't been his game. Yeah, there's the ram once again. It is the ulti from Peanut, but not able to interrupt the call of the Forge God. Now Doran doing a lot of work with his scissors as Peanut able to get back, but that's not a reset for Viper. Just barely not able to get it done, and the Yone falls down. It's under the locks, that one up, and now it's his turn to pop up in the fight. Vega finds a triple just immediately, and T1 moved to that point. He's gonna lock it. This in game four, match point for T1, and once again, it's the vein. This time around, into the wreck side. Yeah, he says, if I'm not getting a blind top He's not really uh, a champion that can Impact anything except taking these grubs counterwise, at least he's going to be able to get that. And with the full information, he should be able to get all three. Yep, does also, you know, manage to get towards level five. Uh, level six is going to be on the cards. As you can see, Doran, he has managed to make it there. With the back coming in from Zeus, doesn't get to take teleport, of course, on the vein. You do want to have as much mobility as possible on this champion. And so, therefore, while he was back, he was able to get a ton done on the Zeri. Oh, they have spotted that Gumiushi is possibly alone. There's the paranoia. As Peanut dives in, he flashes on top of the CC. He's going to be there. The Crescent goes too good from Ona. He's just going to get them out of there. Zeka will turn off. They do manage to take down the Varus, but the Zeri, nothing she can do, and T1 will win the skirm. And what did Ox just say? You know, the first gank, the first attempt completely backfires. And as soon as I saw the paranoia come out and things go dark, I had question marks over my head. Is this even work out? You don't have prior, you don't have control. And Delight will get taken Whoa. out here as well. No yeah, exit he's up, but well. I, I got a little bit confused. I looked over at you. He's held off. If you got in luck, we got his flash, got his cleanse. Take that small victory instead of giving three kills over, because now they are really in the hole. You have a team that has so much you know, built up synergy to right? kind of win. T1 read them like a book. 
They are now going to be able to take themselves a Drake. They'll uh, convert that into pushing ever further in side lanes. And speaking of which, now Zayas, with the fact he hasn't, it hasn't been his day, and he is a player that has required a day. As now that was a decent sidestep there from Kumiushi, but there is no way he's surviving this one. Peanut. But it just has not been the case. Like this Nocturne pick, from a big hole in draft as Carrier going in. Yeah, the hook does come on down there as they do get a stun. Carrier just all by himself, and he's really dead, guys. We'll see whether Hummer Life Esports can turn this into any extra of a kill. They give the kill over to Zeka there. Not tunneling around, borrowing. Nice, just go Dragon. Oh, here's another possibility as the Magnet Storm comes on down. Chains of Corruption are not going to be enough to stop this one as Viper gets his first carrier. Is now in the back of the pit with absolutely nowhere to go. It's a double as the burst fire happened with Zekka, but it's in fact Delight who makes the clutch play there with the Magnet Storm engaged. Gets Viper those two kills. And that is a very scary thing for T1 here is now a gold lead for Hanwha Life. The early game so much in T1's favor, but some overextended, some small mistakes, and now... You know, game stayed a lot better than it was moments ago. With so much gold being on Guma, I feel like we're going to have, like, a dragon. It's a big... And I think all summons going to be back up. Oh, oh dear. Empress Divide just going to throw Carrier back. That is going to be one pick, but the Baron just spawned 30 seconds ago. Possible off going to take this top tier one, but the threat is there. I mean, Faker, they have topside push, and Faker can just put up a wall if they do want to start this, but they have not, so it's like they're just going to give up the Dragon here and look to try to push Doran. Oh, Doran could be in so much trouble. There are four people coming on over. That flash hook just amazing from Carrier, the seismic shove to push him back in, and if they just keep him CC'd, he is going to die. That is going to do it. The Rek'Sai goes down. T1 get their pick, and they might also get a Baron. Uh, tough call to make here. This is not the same decisive 20-minute Baron we saw in game three. Yeah, this is dangerous, because Peanut's still here, and he has access to a light switch. Zeka has flash ult as well. This is really risky. Yeah, Paranoia does come down. There's a flash Magnus Storm, but it's only on to two. Delight not quite, quite finding the same amount of value, and he is going to be taken down. It's now Viper versus Zayas. Zayas actually trying to tumble around this fight, but he's crashed into that condemn. Amazing onto Zeka, as the Baron is going to go down. It's going to be Ona that takes it. Not able to find it is Peanut, and he's even taken down by Faker. Zeka gets rid of get the kill, and once again, just out rotating Hanwha Life. Hanwha's so The problem is, is that it's happened the last two games in a row, and the more it keeps happening, the more inevitable. Nation. Trying to be picked up here. Ona might be their target as Paranoia comes on in. Ona able to talk to the rest of his team. Crescent Guard does come out. He's taking a lot of damage, soaking a lot of damage, but it's not going to be enough. And the kill goes over to Viper. There is the pick on to the jungler, but I mean, the time what, what are you going to take? Yeah. Baron's already gone. They, they was running out anyway, so T1 didn't have much time to use it anymore regardless. Dragon, Ona's going to be up from that. Oh, oh, Baker. Oh, no, there's the face check. The crash down comes on in, and Peanut, he will be able to get the fear off. Yeah, he does manage to get the rocks down, but that is going to be the last. Oh, get Ona is likely to be able to get in there, though. That is going to be the secure from Peanut. And there is the Black Magnus Storm. Delight getting in there. Viper is altered as well, but the first kill is going to go over to T1. Delight now in trouble, and he is going to be taken out. And now Zayas, he is an 80 carry as well, and he is looking gigantic in this one. That is going to be him hunting down Viper. He is going to be able to help take down Peanut as well. The hook from Carrier is just too good. And T1 damage on his turret as well. It's just gone. No, it's ridiculous. He's managed to complete his Trinity Force. Now looking for his next. Reaper's well ready for Faker. Yep, Faker going to get that one in there as Delight off to the side. Not necessarily in the best position here. They dive over. It's actually Kamiyuki again! Taking the Baron with the arrow! We've seen that one before. It's now pressing guard. Ona diving on in, and he just takes down Peanut. Matters into his own hands. And now Delight tries to go for the re-engage, but who's tankier? It is Carrier this time, and now Zayas, this is where he thrives. Viper just taking thirds of his health at a time. All those 10 seconds still Dragon, so... Oh, the Black Hook, and he manages to find Zekka! Free delivery with the seismic show! Carrier finding the angle! That may have been the game-winning play. Carrier, he's just taken this game into his own hands. He and Owner have had so many fantastic engages with his Locket, with Owner's Crescent Guard. They just go in, they're hell-bent on making the engages happen, and it works out. Oh. Zayas, will he be stopped? Viper on a, a weird angle there, trying to see whether maybe they could layer some CC, but it's not going to work out. The Zeri with the man disadvantage. 
is just not going to be as scary in these team fights. I'm like, these once they lose yet another inhibitor this series. And now it's a 10,000 gold lead between the two teams. Absolutely massive this one. Even if he doesn't have his flash, but isn't an easy target to get on top of. There's so many threats. Of course, they have a vein. They, uh, she can cut through pretty comfortably, but AK1 are looming. And yeah, like you said, I mean, Faker, he's got the wall. He can just build that. He is going to put that one together now as Peanut is now in this pit. Can they win the smite is the question. Great spell shield comes on down, and that's the engage here from Ona. He tries to hold on. Hook not really doing too much, but it is Ona that takes the soul for T1. It's gigantic now because they're the ones with the shield. They're the ones with the control. Oh, wow. And the Hook is going to find this Ari. She is able to press that cleanse flash button, try and get himself out of there. But it's Delight that falls to flank angle from Say it's the flash. The tumble and the vein is going to find the fight. He goes invisible and snipes out the Zeri, and this man maybe should just become the 80 carries. So There's good. the cleanup from the vein you needed. A fantastic grab from Carrier kicks off the fight. You know, on Life Esports thought T1 got the soul and walked away, but once again, T1 have controlled the game, controlled the series, and are now looking to end. 16 out of 18 KP for Carrier, and it looks like T1 have done it. Another finals, the Gen Z T1 prophecy, it just keeps delivering. And on the sixth time of asking, T1 will do it again, another grand final.